Hey everybody, today we are going to get started with our newest Beverly Cleary book, Socks. Beverly Cleary has a wonderful series that includes Ramona, Henry and Ribsy, and Beezus. However, this story is actually one that is not part of any other series. So the characters in this text are going to be characters that we're going to pay careful attention to because we are beginning a brand new journey with these characters. We won't know traits about them based on things they've done in previous stories. So our job and our goal as smart third grade readers will be to gather information about these characters and to gather information about their traits based on the things they do as we read along from socks. Just like we always do before we begin a new text, we're gonna start our pre-reading activities. I'm gonna read the blurb from the back of the text to you. Remember, the blurb is going to give you a small bit of information about some of the five fiction story elements. We should hear a little information about characters. We should hear a little, of in, a little bit of information, excuse me, about the setting. And we are definitely going to hear some information about the problem in the text. The reason why we do that is because hearing about the problem in the blurb really hooks that reader. So think about that when you're working on your writing as a writer, what would you really want to say? What words would you really want to use to help interest your reader? So here's the blurb from Socks. Watch out, Socks. Socks is one very happy cat. He lives the good life with his nice young owners, Mr. and Mrs. Bricker. They play with him, feed him, and always welcome him with love into their warm laps. Then a new baby arrives. Suddenly, little Charles William is getting all the Bricker's attention. Socks feels left out. And to show it, he starts getting into all sorts of trouble. What will make Socks realize just how much the Brickers care about him? Read to find out. So the very first sentence that the author Beverly Cleary tells us is that Socks is one very happy cat. By giving us this detail right away, it's her way of telling us that this is important. So her purpose for putting it there is because we need to know that Socks is a happy cat. Chapter one is titled The Kitten Sale. The tabby kitten licked his white paws over the edge of the box marked kittens, 25 cents or best offer. The girl with the stringy hair and sunburned arms picked him up and set him down in the midst of his wiggling, crawling, meowing brothers and sisters. He wanted to get out. She wanted him to stay in. The, pu the puzzling struggle had gone on all morning in the space between the mailbox and the newspaper rack near the door of the supermarket. Nice fresh kittens for sale, called out the little girl whose name was Debbie. She usually held the kitten in her arms and he expected her to hold him now. Ugh, this is stupid, said her brother George, embarrassed to be selling kittens with his younger sister on a summer morning. Who ever heard of fresh kittens? Me, said Debbie, as she pushed the kitten down once more. Then she repeated at the top of her voice, nice fresh kittens for sale. She knew she wasn't stupid, and this wasn't stupid, and she enjoyed annoying her brother. The two had quarreled at breakfast. George said Debbie should sell the kittens because she played with them and that made them hers. Debbie said George should sell the kittens because she didn't know how to make change. Besides, he was the one who had brought the mother home when she was a kitten, so that made the kittens his. Their father had said, stop bickering, you two. You can both go and sell them. And that was that. The white pod kitten, unaware of the hard feelings between the brother and sister, tried again. He stepped on another kitten and this time managed to lift his chin over the rim of the carton. What a cute thing to visualize. His surprised blue eyes took in a parking lot full of shoppers pushing grocery carts among the glittering summer heat. He was fascinated and frightened at the same time. Now socks, said Debbie as she unhooked his claws from the cardboard. Please be a good kitten. Socks's orange and white sister caught his tail and bit it. Socks rolled over onto his back and swiped at her with one white paw. He no longer felt playful towards a little mate, a litter mate, excuse me, who bit his tail. Now that he was seven weeks old, he wanted to escape from all the rolling, pouncing, and nipping that went on inside their box. Unfortunately, no shopper was willing to buy Socks or his freedom. 
Several paused to smile at the sign, and then Socks found himself pushed back to the bottom of the heap by Debbie. What are you going to do with all the money when you sell the kittens? asked an elderly woman who was lonely. Daddy said we should save up to have the mother cat shoveled, so we won't have kittens all the time, answered Debbie. She means spade, corrected George. She means that we should have the mother spade. Oh, said the woman and went into the market. And if you're reading and wondering what that means, a veterinarian can spay a female pet, and that is a way of making sure that they don't have any more babies. It's something safe that a veterinarian can do. Ugh, that's stupid too, said George. Anyway, I think Dad was joking. This time, Debbie looked as if she agreed with her brother, and maybe it wasn't the best idea. What are we going to do? She asked as she plucked socks from the edge of the carton once more. Nobody seems to want them. Hmm, mark them down, I guess. Dad said to give them away if we had to. The boy borrowed a felt tip pen from a checker in the grocery store, and while socks peered over the edge of the carton, he crossed out the 25 cents on their sign and wrote 20 cents above it. So we're going to pause here for a minute because what I want to stop to talk about is a couple of things. First, I want to stop to talk about how they are making an attempt to solve their problem. They have a goal of selling all of the kittens because that is what their parents have told them to do. However, working and shouting out kittens, 25 cents, that hasn't been helping. So her brother makes an attempt to solve the problem by marking down the price. I also want you to think about how Beverly Cleary keeps talking about Debbie and Socks. And she keeps talking about how Socks really likes Debbie and how Socks wants to continue to be held by Debbie. So that's making me think that Socks, the cat, and Debbie, this little girl, have a close bond. So if Beverly Cleary is starting off the story by telling me about that, it's telling me as a reader that that's certainly something that's important. I also want to take a minute to talk a little bit about the situation between George and Debbie and how siblings often have situations where they argue or don't necessarily get along and they have to figure out some kind of way to deal with it or work it out. My perspective from a parent is I see that all the time and I have to remind Nick and Joe that they have to work it out. So we'll read more from chapter one of Socks later. Thanks so much, everybody.